Okay, quick note, I'm really apologize for the weird hand gestures I do in this video, like, I didn't notice that I was doing them, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so I thought, like, okay, my hair looks a mess, um, because I just washed it, and also, I thought this looked good on me, but it doesn't, but anyway, this is irrelevant. Um, so basically, I, uh, hi guys, so I thought I'd do a quick video, um, explaining how the free, pa the free papers in, um, AQA, AQA A-level languages work, because... I do A level Spanish, and but th the specification is the pretty much the exact same as French and German A AQA A level. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video just like explaining how they work. Um, it's because pretty much the layout of the papers and the specification and like how you get marks is pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is, of course, the actual language and like the content. But apart from that. It's pretty much the same, so okay. I'm not gonna waffle, so I'm just gonna get into it. So, also one thing I'm, I need to say quickly is this is for the A level, the A level specification. This is not A. This is not for the AS uh, specification because the specific um, the exams are slightly different in AS than A A level. Um, like they're usually they're shorter and they're slightly different, like weighing and percentages. Um, and a lot of schools that do the A level, they use like the A, the um, AS structure in the first year, but not like as exams. So um, you may be thinking, oh, this is different from what we've learned that this year's exams will be. But this is for the whole A level. So this is by the end of the two years. And also, this is this also kind of applies to some other AQA A levels like languages like uh, Bengali and um, Polish and a few others. The only thing is that they don't have speaking and that they have an extra writing paper but anyway so okay so for french german and spanish a aqa a level so there's three pa there's three papers but they're not equally weighed um there is um so there's pa first of all there's paper one this is 50 percent and um this is worth 100 marks um and it's worth 50 percent of your whole a level this is the big um this is a long paper, it's two and a half hours, and it is the listening, reading, and translation paper. So it is basically like the reading paper and the listening paper of GCC, but like put together into one paper. Um, there's also translations at the back. Um, there's one from the language into English, which is 10 marks, and then there's one from English into the language for another 10 marks. Um, there is more, there are only 30, only 30 marks are allocated to um, the listening element and 70 marks are allocated to the um, to the to the reading and translation element so reading plays a big mark like a big point um, in it a big ugh, error one thing that is different from GCC um, in a level is that this time with listening you have control of how much you can play it like you can listen to the same extract like a hundred times if you wanted to um it's, it's not like you see where they just played it out to the whole um like to the whole like um hall everyone who was taking an exam you have control you get you get given a computer or a laptop or um i don't know some other way you can listen to it and you get to control you get to go back um the only thing Whilst this is good because you can listen to it several times and you can listen to several phrases several times, the only thing is that it's quite hard because sometimes people, they spend too much on the listening element and then they don't have enough time for the reading or for the translation. But um, they have like a rough kind of guide at the beginning. They they suggest um, spending um, 40 minutes on listening and an hour and uh, five minutes and an hour and five No, sorry, that is completely wrong. Um, so they, so as, as I said, um, it's two and a half hours and they suggest on the paper, they suggest roughly spending about 45 minutes on the, on the, um, listening element and, um, another hour and 45 minutes on the reading and translation element. The only thing is I'd suggest maybe like, um, leaving 10 minutes at the end to like check, quickly check your work, like make sure you haven't made like any like silly errors or left anything blank. But, um, also one thing that is different from the, um, A-level and GCC is that there's new kind of questions. So there's obviously like the normal comprehension, but two, one thing that is new at A-level from GCC is you have a summary. So they have one for listening and they have one for reading. So they'll give you, um, either a like short passage or like 
at short text or like a short text but to listen to well you get both and they'll give you three points and you have to summarize you have to summarize the text in those three points uh, because for example if they did a, te a um a text on um a text on Spanish music, and they said include um, these three bullet points, and mm -hmm. it was like the influence of Spanish music today, um, Spanish music mm -hmm. in the Hispanic world, uh, sp Spanish music, sp mm -hmm. Spanish music in the past, and they they give you how many points to write for each one, and um, and one thing that you do need for this is synon synonyms. So, so then it's, it's not just you copying it, it's you using your own words. Um, and you have a limit, you have 90 words. In the AS it's 70 words, but in A level it's 90 words. And another new exercise that you have, that, and you have one, as I've said, you have two, and they're both, work, both worth 12 marks. Seven marks for content and five marks for, um, for like the quality of your writing, like if you can keep it concise, if you can keep it, if you can use your own words, if the grammar is correct, if you can use subjunctive, etc, etc. Um, and another new thing that you have at a um, at a level that you don't have at GCC is they give you an um, a reading text and you have to go through it and um, find the synonyms. So um, they'll say, find a synonym for, I'll say this in English, for beautiful and there might be something like cute in the like cute in the text um, i'm not making any i'm not really making sense but like it'll you do a lot of practice of this in class so it'll get clearer then there is paper two paper two is the reading is the writing paper so this is what um this is what this is two two hours and it is worth 20 percent of your a level but it is 80 marks and you might be thinking how is this worth 80 marks and only worth 20 percent but other papers, but paper three is worth sixty percent, sixty marks, but thirty percent. That is because what they do is for paper one they double your marks, for paper three they double your marks, but for this paper they don't. So this is worth twenty percent. Um, so you have two essays to do, each worth ten percent. Each of them are forty marks, and you get twenty marks for content and twenty marks for like the quality of your writing, like because it, uh, of course. It's in another language. Um, so, yeah, so you have to write the essays in another language. Like, I know that that's like, <gasps> but seriously, like, you do a lot of practice of this in class. Um, and in this, um, you in the A-level course, you study two texts. You study um, a film and you study a play or book. Um, but I think you can also study two books if you want. But usually, most teachers, they choose to study a film and a play or book. Um, and... This, uh, it seems quite intense, but the questions are quite, um, like, there's, they, there'll be something like, analyze how, um, analyze how the author use, or no, how the playwright uses, no, not the playwright, the filmmaker uses color to illustrate, blah, 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 or, um, this character is presented as morally better than another character. To what extent do you agree? And these will all be in the target language. So if you're doing Spanish, they'll be in Spanish. You have to answer Spanish. If you're doing French, they'll be in French. You have to answer in French, etc., etc. Um, and then there is pa and then there is paper free. Um, paper free is not actually a paper. It is um the speaking exam. So this is rough. This is worth thirty percent, and it's about half an hour a bit less you get five minutes preparation time and it's what it's divided into two parts the first part is the card so you'll be given two cards and these will be on the um these will be on one of the topics that you have studied throughout the two years not on the book or the film or the play um these will be on one of the 12 topics that you have studied throughout the two years and um and um you get a choice of two, so they'll give you two, and you can, you can choose which one you have to answer. And there'll be t t three questions on it, and you have to like prepare answers for each each of those three in the five minutes preparation time you can have. And you also need to ask the examiner a question. You will also need to. Um, they will also ask you more questions. How many? It depends because there's a certain set time. I think it's about eight minutes. I think yeah, I think it's about eight minutes. So. It, they could ask you a lot if if your um, answers are really long and sophisticated, and you have like a long discussion. It's more like a d discussion. So, it how long it goes that really depends on 
how many questions you have. It's usually, you usually get about five questions. So if the three that you've gotten and two made up, uh, well, not made up, but like two improvised. And you will again, you'll also have to um, tell them, you also have to ask the examiner a question. Um, another, que um, another, and then the other, so that's 50 marks. The other half is the independent learning project. So what you do is you research your own project you then do a one or two minute presentation on it to the examiner and it's not like an, a powerpoint or anything you just literally just say it in again in the target language and they will ask you questions about it um and you'll usually get three bullet points so for example i did my my not my actual one but like a mock one like last year i did mine on uh, um gay and lesbian rights in spain and my three bullet points was gay and le lesbian rights in Spain today, gay and lesbian rights in Spain in during Franco's like like dictatorship, and um, gay and les um, the difficulties that gay and lesbian people um, face in Spain nowadays. And so they could ask me questions on any of those three bullet points. Like they wouldn't ask something like um, how are gay and lesbian rights in Mexico. Um, and also, and also, one thing that I should have said at the beginning of the video is that when, uh, when in the course, although you, for example, in Germ in Germany you will study mainly Germany, in Spain you in Spanish you'll study Spain, in Fr French you'll study France. The 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 countries that you learn about, they can be any country where this language is is a main language. Like, for example, I am pretty sure that in um. No, in Spanish, um, we can use any, like, country. We can use any, like, Spanish-speaking country. So, for French Guiana... No, not French Guiana. That was a fail. Uh, we can... So, we can use uh, Equatorial Guinea. We can use... Um, we can talk about Mexico. We can talk about Central American... America, South America, um, or most of South America. And also, the, the 12 um, topics... You have so you'll have twelve topics. Um, they're kind of divided into three, like four big topics, but like ish. But anyway, um, you have twelve topics. This is um, a textbook of the second year, and um, each of those twelve topics you have six in the first year, six in the second year, and each of those twelve uh, twelve topics have three subtopics in them. So, for example, one of the topics was cultural identity in Spain for Spanish. And it was divided into um, languages, food, and festivals, and um, and yeah, I think pretty much that's it. I'm really sorry that I rambled a bit, but like I think also I forgot to say. So basically, as I've said, you've had six, you have twelve topics. Um, the twelve topics will be on two of the papers. They will be on paper one, so they'll be in listening or reading tasks or translation tasks. Um, like, there might be a m kind of mixture, but, like, all the information that you have gathered won't really, will be, like, will be more useful in paper three, which is the, li which is the, um, speaking paper. So you need to use your knowledge about the speaking paper because, about the topics you've learned, because they'll ask you questions. So they may ask something like, um, what can you tell us about the use of, um, the use of Facebook in Spain? Or what can you tell us about... Um, this, what can you tell us about a, um, inspirational artist in France? Like, things like that. So, it's important to remember facts for, um, about it for paper three. And I'll go that into that in my A-level advice video. But for paper one, the main thing that will be important is, like, if you understand it. And if you know the, the grammar, uh, well, not so much the grammar, but, like, the vocabulary. The vocabulary. Because, um... There'll be like, for example, they could um in one of the practice papers we did, there was one about um this guy, um breaking up with his girlfriend, like divorcing his girlfriend, I mean his wife through um WhatsApp, which is kind of a mixture of the marriage topic and also the internet topic. So it could be like a kind of mixture, and some of them could be a bit ambiguous, like they might be a mixture of several, but there will be pretty much topics from each of these. Um, so well, if you're wondering what what will I use the textbook for, it will be for them, ish. I mean, it don't make sense, but yeah. I've kind of explained everything into like in proper detail. Um, I, one thing I do need to say is that um, actually no, I'll say it later on. But I hope this has been helpful. I really hope this hasn't like put you off or anything. But um, 
the papers are a bit intense, but like, but learning language is like really rewarding. And also by the end of it, like you'll be used to it. Like, uh, actually, I'm just gonna save this speech for my um, A level languages advice video. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful. But yeah, have a nice evening. Oops. Oops.